SD cards or Type A cards. We're going to be discussing this today. And uh, yeah, obviously, new reader here. This is the ProGrade Type A and SD card reader, but you can get the Sony one. But obviously, Type A is your Sony proprietary card, and you've just bought the FX30 or A74, and you're like, do I need a Type A card or could I get away with an SD card, the V30s, 60s, 90s? What do I buy? What actually works in which recording state? We're gonna be talking about that today because I know there's a lot of you guys out there with that exact question and I really hope I can help a lot of you guys out in this whole debacle of which cards you actually need and which is good. So yeah, we've got a lot to get through, but this video is actually sponsored by Storyblocks. So thank you for Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. They are an all-in-one platform where you can get a whole bunch of templates, uh, motion graphics, video templates. You can pretty much find anything you need to make your video stand out with a library of over 1 million 4K or HD footage clips, templates, music, sound effects, images, and more. You can pretty much have unlimited downloads and you can easily test out effects, clips, and tracks to enhance your videos to create your vision and bring it to life. The great thing about this is it's all royalty free. You don't have to worry about any copyright strikes, which is great for content creators and especially for businesses out there that want to be able to utilize this with their client work. And motion graphics. Motion graphics I've been using a lot from Storyblocks and I actually didn't know that Storyblocks had motion graphics before this and uh, it's been really good because this is pretty much how I get all my titles and all those kind of things to make it look, you know, much better because I don't know how to use motion graphics or create them from scratch. And I think the newest thing and greatest thing about Storyblocks is the Premiere Pro plugin. Now I use Premiere Pro and you can actually have a plugin where you can search, drag and drop directly in Premiere Pro. So you don't actually have to go out to your search engine and try and find all this stuff and bring it to Premiere Pro. It just makes it less complicated. It is amazing. So utilize my code at storyblocks.com forward slash Jason Morris or the link in the description below so you guys can check it out for yourself so you can not worry about any copyright strikes all those kind of things, get quality content for your videos. Thank you Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. Let's get back into this about talking about Type A cards and SD cards for your FX30 or any other Sony Alpha camera. So the first card we're gonna be starting off with is the Sandisk Extreme card. This is an SDHC, so it's a U3 and it's a class 10. Now this has 90 megabytes per second and the only thing it can actually do when it comes to 4K is 4K 25 frames per second, but at the lowest megabit rating. So 60 megabits per second, 4208 bit codec. And switching it into SNQ mode and it can't really seem to do any slow and quick functions. So now I'll put a Sandus Extreme Pro a V30 card and it's an XDXC card. It's 95 megabits per second and we're in XAVC S 4K and it can do 4K 50 frames per second at 200 megabits per second at 422 10-bit. And it can't do any all eye codec. Now when it comes to XAVC HS codec in 4K, you can do the same up to 4K 50 frames per second at 200 megabits per second. Now we'll look at the 1080p settings at XAVC SHD. And putting it into 100 frames per second at 100 megabits per second at 4208 bit. And we can record. And just putting it into SNQ mode and you can't do 200 frames per second at the lower bit rate, but you can do 100 frames per second at 50 megabits per second, 422 10-bit. So now I know a lot of you beginners will actually be utilizing some of these V30 cards and they are very, very cheap when it comes to all the other cards like the Type A cards. They're very expensive, but these can pretty much do absolutely everything. These ones are limited. They at least give you 4K 50 frames per second, and you can even get that HD at 100 frames per second. But you know, that's pretty much limited to that. So if you do want better recording codecs and stuff, you're going to have to go V60 or V90, which we're gonna be talking about right now. So in the V60 cards, you can pretty much record all the codecs except for the all eye codec. So that's the XAVC SI in 4K and in HD. Now switching it over to SNQ mode, and this is just in regular XAVC HD. You can actually do up to 100 frames per second in 50 megabits per second, 422 10-bit. Now when it comes to SNQ mode and filming at 200 frames per second, you can do that, but it must be at 16 megabits per second, 4208 bits. You cannot record any higher bit rate or 10-bit. 
And similarly, when you go into XAVCS at 4K, you're able to do 100 frames per second, but you have to choose the lower bit rate. So it's at 60 megabits per second, 408 bit. You cannot do the 100 megabits or the 140 megabits per second with that 10 bit codec. Now, when you actually place this into XAVCS in 4K, you can actually film up to 100 frames per second in that S and Q mode at 140 megabits per second, 422 10-bit. Now, when it comes to the V90 cards, this is the card that you can pretty much film absolutely any codec when it comes to the normal filming codecs. But when we go over to SNQ, this is where you cannot film in all light codec at 4K 100 frames per second. You can also not be able to do uh, 1080p at 200 frames per second in the all light codec, but you can do 100 frames per second in all light codec at HD. And if you do want to utilize these options, this is where you're going to have to upgrade to the CF Express Type A cards. Now, from what we've seen, the V60 and V90 cards are probably the ones that you're going to be going for. I mean, unless you have some decent pockets, uh, the Type A cards are probably the ones that I absolutely recommend because you can record absolutely any codec and then when it comes to photography, it clears out the buffer a lot faster and that's why Sony actually designed these. Now these are actually much more robust as well. They're very thick and solid, not like the SD cards. These are very flimsy and very plasticky and uh, I've had a lot of these break in the past and I still recommend Sony Tough cards or these Type A cards. But when it comes to pricing, these ones are probably gonna be more likely in the majority of people's budgets. So like I said earlier, I utilize these ones. These are the ProGrade ones and they seem to fit exactly what I do when it comes to you know, videography and photography. But if you do want the card that does all, Type A cards are the one to go. So I really hope this video helped you guys out and if it did, give it a thumbs up, that'd be absolutely amazing. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. The link will be in the description below if you do wanna check out uh, this card reader, the ProGrade cards with the Type A's and uh, regular SD cards, even the FX30 cage. I've got a video coming out about this FX30 cage. But I really hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you Storyblocks for sponsoring this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, let's get it.